Welcome to A Guide to Every Deck in Legacy. Today we're looking at Bomberman. Bomberman is a white artifact based combo deck that revolves around Oriok Salvager's synergy with Lion's Eye Diamond to create infinite mana. The deck is always white but can also splash into other colors. With Oriok Salvagers and Lion's Eye Diamond, you can sacrifice LED for white and return it with Salvagers, netting one white mana. Repeat for infinite white mana, then switch colors and make infinite mana of every color if needed. This unfortunately discards your hand, but you can use the infinite mana to win with cards that are already in play, usually Walking Ballista or Karn the Great Creator, which finds Ballista. You can also generate infinite tokens with Retrofitter Foundry, although this doesn't win the game immediately. In red versions, you can activate Den of the Bugbear infinite times and attack, creating infinite attacking tokens. A second combo recently added to the deck due to the Baldur's Gate set involves going infinite with Displacer Kitten. If you have Kitten and Teferi Time Raveler, you can bounce any of various zero mana artifacts with Teferi, then replay it, triggering Kitten to blink Teferi and letting you bounce it again. This draws your entire deck and generates a huge amount of mana if the card you're replaying is Mox Opal since you can tap it before bouncing it. You can then win via Walking Ballista, Karn, or some other infinite mana outlet. The fact that Teferi is one of the combo pieces is particularly good since he also protects your combo and can bounce troublesome permanents like creature threats or hate pieces. Karn the Great Creator deserves a special mention since it functions as a combo piece for both aforementioned combos, tutors for various cards, shuts down enemy artifacts in the mirror or against 8 cast, and can serve as its own win condition. Cards you can find with it include the usual suspects like Tormod's Crypt, Raftigger's Cage, Pithing Needle, etc., combo pieces, LED, and Ballista, and it can also win by itself with Mycosynth Lattice. The remainder of the deck is built on cheap enablers like Lotus Petal and Mox Opal, as well as Chalice of the Void since few cards in the deck cost one, and those that do can be cheated through it by Urza's Saga. Speaking of, Saga provides the typical beatdown plan B with Karnstrux and itself fetches combo pieces LED and Opal. Because the deck is playing three different important combo pieces that all cost 4 mana, Ancient Tomb and City of Traders are used to power them out sooner. Other versions of the deck may sacrifice main board 1 mana artifacts and the Teferi Kitten combo to play Garuda as a companion. Other cards that can sometimes be played are Thought Not Seer and Cavern of Souls. Sideboarding and Weaknesses the deck is obviously weak to anything that shuts down or destroys artifacts such as Null Rod, Opposing Karns, Meltdown, etc. It also gets stymied by instant speed creature removal since both its combos involve creatures. Another weakness is an inability to interact with the opponent, especially fast combo decks. The only strong piece of interaction the deck plays is Chalice of the Void, with Karn and Teferi hitting a much narrower set of threats. Outside of the Karn Wishboard, the deck can run any of various white and blue interactive cards such as Swords to Plashers for Creatures or Meddling Mage against combo decks. Tips and Tricks Regarding Displacer Kitten, even if you don't have a zero mana artifact, you can still blink to Fairy for value with other cards. Karn himself can fetch a zero mana artifact and be blinked immediately to fetch a second card. Similarly, Oriok Salvagers can return other artifacts besides LED, for example, Looping Aether Spellbomb. Odawara can bounce not just threats and hate pieces, but your own permanents as well to save them from removal. It's important to know what number to name with Chalice of the Void. It'll usually be one, but there are cases where you'll want a different number. You can bounce Chalice with Teferi or Odawara to replay it on a different number, or if you need to cast spells that it's blocking. You can also destroy it with Karn's plus one. Even if you don't have an infinite loop, you can still use LED to cast spells by sacrificing it first, then fetching a card with Karn or drawing afterwards in other ways. If you sideboard Pithing Needle, your opponent must activate anything they want to with an activated ability before you sacrifice Saga to tutor for it. They can't wait and see what you get since once Needle's in play, it's too late. I hope you've enjoyed this look at Bomberman. I want to thank my fellow players in the Magic community for whom sharing their experiences helps make these guides possible. You can find additional resources, such as an up-to-date deck list, in the description. If you think I left out anything important or got something wrong, please leave your thoughts in the comments and stay tuned to see what deck we look at next time.